That, that's the real Hendrix. All right. And away we go. Hey, everybody. It's October 1st, 2014, if you can believe it. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Um, Halloween approaches. So this is our second show from uh, Tone Merchants in North Hollywood, California. My good friend Francis is right here. Say hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. Um, <laughs> Francis is one of the key members of the KISS organization. And uh, sometimes don't you I don't actually... know which key. It's more, like the, it's more like the garage key. It's not like the front door key. Yeah. Or the bathroom key. <laughs> the bathroom right. key. But it's like the back it's of like key. It's like the shed key. The back of key that kind of... Yeah. has got to jiggle. But don't you actually yeah. go out... Don't you actually... <laughs> it never just turns smooth. Yeah. Jiggle to the left. No um, spraying graphite yeah. in there. Yep. And, and Frank Falbo is here. Miles Rose is here on the sofa. And then we might have a special guest here in a couple minutes. Um... So, no, what is your role with KISS, Francis, officially? Into the microphone. I have a backline crew chief. Into the microphone. Backline crew chief. Yeah. Um, but mainly Paul Stanley's guitar tech. Oh, okay. And how long have you been working with Twelve you? years. Twelve years. Twelve years with KISS, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you ever get to go out in full makeup? I've only had one no. marriage that was longer than twelve years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Miles is talking about his marriages already. We just finished a big, uh, successful um, summer tour with Def Leppard. Nice. That was very fun. Great guys. Have you guys ever had Great an band. unsuccessful tour, though? Right. No. I was going to say. Kiss is the hottest when it, band in the world. When has Kiss ever had a <laughs> mediocre tour? You know, Kiss. Uh, I think Revenge Error. I think they had a. Had a couple of down days. I think they. I think the Revenge Error tour. Well, that was their transition period, too, going back into the makeup and all that stuff. So I think. Yes. They were sliding out of the. That was right after. It wasn't Revenge. Right maybe. after uh, Bruce. Was, right. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yep, I think Bruce did Revenge, and then they did one more record, Carnival of Souls, which never really got officially released because they did the reunion. Right. I think they just kind of threw it out there at the end when they were like, okay, we're getting back together, and oh yeah, hey, we did this record. Oh yeah, gotcha. Well, that's cool. We need to get a microphone for you, but um, maybe we'll somehow get that one over here. Huh. This is so slapdash because we're just getting started. but um, I understand it's only your second time here doing this. It's only my second time here. I've been, I've had my gear here for a while, but Dave Friedman, you know, is in the back, mm -hmm. and Rob Navarrete, who owns Tone Merchants. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know, but Dave and I have been doing some work together. He helped me with the new amp that mm -hmm. we have because I love the way he does master volumes, and then I do like this mid gain, lower gain, clean thing. So it was just nice. We decided to do something so it's together. Like, it's like the chocolate and the peanut butter. Exactly. Yes. And exactly. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. delicious. It's like those old commercials where <laughs> they just, hey, you, you ruined my peanut butter. You, you walked in with your amp and fell on his volume thing yeah. and, and you right. got it twisted yeah. up with your lower just like, tone mid yeah. thing. That, it's and they just, went, that sounds great together. Yeah. So that's the whiskey. And we had... Um, it's, uh, yeah, maybe we can get this mic over here for a minute while I'm talking to you. This mic reaches out pretty well. These people say, good show, so right on. Charisma. Right off the bat. Off the Lots bat. of guests to come. You, well, that's the thing about doing it here at Tone Merchants is we can uh, get some more folks involved. And you never know who's going to come through the door. That's right. Well, last week I was here, Phil X walks through, and somebody else I can't remember. So this is kind of the place to be. Enjoy. And I actually didn't know you were doing this today. I, I just happened to come in. Tell all your friends. Coincidence. Yeah. Well, that's really nice. Do you, do you want all your friends? No, your yeah. friends, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your friends, not mine. I don't think you want any of my friends. I, well, I don't have <laughs> friends. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, three if you or four money, marks. tell your enemies. I don't care. Well, you know, eventually what we're going to do is... Everybody I, love, needs I thought Paul Stanley holds a prop guitar. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not um, true. No way. That and Paul's plays. the sweetest guy in the world, yeah. too, isn't he? No, he plays. You know, he gets a lot of... Uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't talk about this over the air. He gets a lot of, you know flack for his live guitar playing but he's performing you yeah, know that's right he's actually a, a decent guitar player. he's dancing and singing he's got a lot going on yeah it's not just it's not just guitar. hey john we do have a special guest how are you come on over john you want to say hi on wayne's world come on over the people the people yeah. are the people are demanding it well we're just kind of doing slapdash stuff until we get it going but you can come and say hello Right over here. Right here. here. You can see yourself. Yeah. Come on through. Are you on a web thing right now? Hi, man. Long time no see. Good to see you. All right. Are we? Is this on? This is yeah. on. Check one two. Check check. Is this check. thing on? Mic check. Mic check one two one oh, two. Yeah. That's good. Hey everybody, John Shanks. How are you? Who has sold a few records in his life? 
What brings you over to Tone Merchants? Uh, well, I'm a partner with Tone Merchants. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. You're one of the partners here. Actually, I don't know. I just I actually, show up you, here. If you spin the camera around, you could see the lighting that... You know, I did. That we have, I helped decorate this. Was that your lighting? And that, the drapery. And the drapery, but of course... Is, are the bulbs, are we happening? No, no, no. no they kind of mess up the webcam. Oh, they have, so. oh, see, yeah. I see. Okay. You're messing up my Hollywood. Okay, vibe, I'm man. sorry. But, you oh, know. It's only because we haven't hung all the lights and got the thing finally. As long as you're hung, it's all. It's well, you know. yeah, there's so many jokes I'm going to leave alone there. So, so, yeah, so we went in, you know, kind of. So, I, I, didn't real, I didn't realize that. So, you, you set up the man cave vibe here. I, yeah, the bordello y. Uh, does kind of have a little bit of 1930s speakeasy. Very good. Yeah. Um, old Hollywood. The old Hollywood. Rock and old Hollywood. Rudy yeah. Valentino's in the back paying for it. Someone's getting paid. Yeah, I like for it. it. Yeah. So what's going on here? What, not, not much. What, what do you have here? Oh, this is my quit smoking device. Okay. And how's that working out for you? Pretty well. I've been quitting for two years. <laughs> <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. Yeah. <laughs> is this thing on? Take, Check yeah. one, two. How Check. long does it take to quit? Yeah. Um, well, here's the you know, thing. The great thing about quitting is you just stop. I, you know, when I like to quit over and over again. I don't want to just do it once. It took me about two weeks. To quit smoking? You yeah. haven't smoked cigarettes forever, though, have you? Uh, 20 something years ago. Well, I kind of officially quit in like 1990. Uh huh. And then I got in this business. Yeah. And I go to the NAM show and I'm hanging out with Europeans or I'm in studios or whatever. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'll you have can't a, smoke in studios. I'll have, well, outside. But, unless you're smoking something else. But. Right. Yeah, you can't smoke tobacco in studios no, anymore. Unless you use one of these. Yeah. And, uh, and then the true um, addict, as far as nicotine goes, comes out. Yeah. And it takes me like two months to To me, quit. it's when I go to, to a club or see a band. Right. or that's where, I, that's where it seems appealing to me. Yeah, there's certain situations where playing music also. I've been playing a lot of music now for a few years. So is this like cable access 23? No, this is an actually, World. Wayne's World. Well, we Wayne's World at least had a theme song and credits. So we need a song. You want to do one? We should probably come up with a song. Yeah, okay. You're gonna need to write a song. Do you know anyone who can write yeah, songs? Can, yeah. Okay. We, we can come up with something, but it's got to be totally. These good. are the jokes because this is one of the most prolific songwriters in the world. So are people asking enough. questions? Yeah. Okay. Stop blaming so the Europeans. There's about a 15 tough. or 20 second delay here. So Stop anyway. Blame. I love the Europeans. I do a lot of work in England. So I always England. had this joke that if they ever came out with a cigarette yeah. that doesn't kill you, I'll be on it. Uh-huh. And that's it. And it's just steam. This is kosher vegetable oil with uh -huh. Uh -huh. medical grade nicotine in it. Oh, so there is. And it lights up. Yeah. But the nicotine's not the dangerous part. John's Les Paul is a Gibson replicated you can buy. That's right. Yes, it was a cust. Uh, is that that 60 that you bought when I was with you? Yes. At the Santa Monica Guitar Show? Yes, we, I bought it from... Uh, that was a, Jay, right? From Jay Rosen. Yeah. It's a 1960 Les Paul, It's but it's got 59 features. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's like early 60s, isn't it? Very, so, very early 60s. So, so it's, it looks it looks and feels like a 59. It does, but the, the reason they liked it... Uh, is that the top is unique. It's kind of, it's not tomato soupy. Yeah. It's like a later 60s, and the neck right. is full, like right. a 59. But the weight, is the way it's balanced is really nice. So I remember when you brought that over, we were sitting at the Santa Monica Guitar Show. John brings it over, and he goes, do you think I should buy this? Because it was, it was more than 100 bucks. And Definitely more than 100 bucks. And... And I, so I gave John, like, the brother talk, like, okay, man, is this in any way, shape, or form going to affect, like, something you would do for your kids or your wife That's right. or anything like this? And he looks at me, that talk. And he looks at me and goes, no. And I said, why are you asking me? Then <laughs> buy the fucking guitar. But the thing was, the guitar is actually an amazing guitar. It is. It's a fantastic so, guitar. So, you know, if you're going to ask these questions, it's, first off, it's collector's choice number seven. Mm. I think, I don't know, if you can't get them anymore. Uh... Yeah, it's but a limited run. Right? It was like 150 or 300, something? 300. 300. 300. And um, personally, not to talk anything bad about the guitars before that, yeah. but there were there were certain things with that guitar that I was pretty uh, serious about them getting it right. Right. Number one was... Let's get you a little closer. Yeah, let's get to check one, too. <laughs> Yeah, so when, so when Gibson gets mad at me, they, they get it clear. Oh, yeah, Henry's watching. Right yeah. Now, so. Uh, uh, so what we got 
the difference with Collector's Choice 7 and on, it was the Joe Perry guitar and my guitar were the, the first ones where they really got the fretboard right. Yeah. They, they were darker. Because, you know, my my little pet peeve with some of these guitars, and, I, and I've said this to... Pat Foley and, yeah. and, and some of the guys. Nothing you wouldn't say to their face. Yeah. There's 120,000 people watching right now. Okay, so <laughs> the thing was, you could put you know the Billy Gibbons or the Eric Clapton across the room against a, you know, an old right. Les Paul, and you, I could tell, even though the tops were really great, right. you could tell by the, the inlays and you could tell by the fretboard, and, yeah. and there were certain other... Tips on the yeah, tuners. the tips on the tuners. Just the aesthetic thing. The right. aesthetics, but you know, at a certain price point, you, you know, you want to make sure you're getting your money's worth. Yeah. So I said, you know, you guys are Gibson. You should, you know, get the right inlays in there, mm -hmm. and um, they're available. You can get them, and so they well, should. You, they can make them. They're the, Gibson. Yeah, or just make it so you can kind of stain them a little bit mm -hmm. if you wanted to darken them, which the new ones you can. And the fretboard... Yeah, they map. color match at Home Depot. I, I right. Mean, I'm sure Gibson can do that. Yeah, they do. So, I don't know if that's that was, exactly what I That was what, what I was going to ask. I know, I'm just being an ass. But um, that's what I was going to ask. Like, how much day-to-day -day input do you have on it? You, you give them they your guitar, they obviously. They sent me... Um, there were a couple prototypes. We got four prototypes. Four prototypes. Yeah. Agreed. Here's the other thing. That's right. For those of you who don't know, Francis also is in charge of all John's gear, so... So, so yeah. Francis knows these guitars really well. So we well went through well. them a bit. And the other thing they did was they used the, they never used cowhide glue. Mm -hmm. So to me, the way the neck, you know, fit into the guitar. And it's a way, long tenon neck. And long tenon neck. neck. Yeah. And the truss rod is the way it's supposed to right. be. And But the way that meets sonically is so much better with cowhide glue because it crystallizes almost like, not to get So you, geeky, get, you get a better like a connection. Stradivarius, like old. Yeah. They, they couldn't figure out why certain violins resonated the way they did yeah. or old Les Pauls, you know, you pick it up and you play it and you just, it just acoustically, it right. just sounds so much better. And so they started using cowhide glue. They started doing the truss rod, yeah. truss rod, right. They started doing the, uh, the fretboard and the inlays yes. and there was something else. And the, and the pickups, we kind of really kind of got into the pickups a little bit, trying to All make the them, right. yeah, they'll make a more low output pickups because you know to me my favorite PAFs have low output mm -hmm. you yeah. know they're in low sevens I was gonna low. say I like about seven and a half down yeah exactly so your yeah. bridge seven and a half and then your neck like seven six, two six, six, point, six eight, eight six, yeah, nine. Exactly. yeah so and I still put and I put caps in my guitars too yeah. so when I roll the volume right. you got a treble bleed so but it's it, not barky. Does so it mute the guitar? It doesn't mute the guitar, yeah. so I can get more of a like a stratty or mm -hmm. a fendery tone out of a Les Paul. Yeah, that's the thing for me. Like the good old Les Pauls are all pretty twangy. They're twangy, and they're very. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they just they're not saturated. They yeah. don't. They don't. You it's know, not. It's not a dark blunt like that. So yeah. yeah. So when you think like for example, like Rusty Anderson in his. A 335 mm -hmm. has those caps. Right. I turned them on to those years yeah. ago. And so so in the, his signature model, they put those caps in. Right. Yeah, so. that's what I've done to all mine. I do the 57 wiring and then put the bleeder caps in there. Right. Yeah. So the 57 wiring is where if you turn off one pickup, you can actually be off in the middle position. Oh, okay. You know, like, it's a, it's a weird one. But now... The, Why do you do that? Um, just for the ability to be off. I mean, dig, 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 like as an effect? I can do it as an effect or... or why don't you just roll your neck pick off and just do it that way? Yeah, but then I can, I'm, I'm one click back. But in. these go to 11. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. See, to me, it's important to do the middle position where I roll the neck off. Like, I even like, you know, I've just fixed up this guitar. It's an old 73 Telecaster Deluxe. Yeah. No, the middle only goes off if you've got one of the pickups all the way off. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. so if you've got both, they got... Because I do that middle position... Yeah. Neck pickup on seven, bridge pickup exactly. wide open thing. Yeah. That works fine. It's just if you roll one pickup all the way off, the guitar will go off. Hmm. I don't know if there's any functional benefit well, to it, but that's just what I'm used to. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I'm used to. I brush my no, teeth No, I, I, I get yeah. that. There's certain things I'm... But yeah, there is the kunk, 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 kunk thing that yeah. you can do. Some guys do it because it's, well, it's, you pull it up, it's the out of phase thing. You yeah. Right, right. So Anyway, I, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Okay. What were we talking about? We were talking... Pickups. Pickups. Oh, I was talking about this 70... I just bought this 1973 Telecaster Deluxe. Yeah. Which is the only year that they had a tremolo. Right. Oh, okay. So it's a Strat with those uh, yeah. humbucking pickups. With those cantered magnets yeah. like that. Which are the Seth Lover pickups. Right. Which are 
awesome. Yeah, Peter's got one of those, and he's he doesn't have one with a tremolo. Yeah, yeah. And he's just nuts about that guitar. He it, can't. He won't travel without it. I know. Yeah. It's kind of becoming. You know, it took a minute to dial in. He has one without a tremolo as well that he's selling. I'm actually he's selling. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, bought, I bought two. And, um, as you do, as one does. Yeah, that's right. Well, they were matching, so I just. <laughs> but I really wanted the one with the tremolo, and so I'm actually selling the other one. So that was one of my favorite moments visiting your studio. You went twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred bucks. <laughs> PayPal first, to <laughs> first John bidder comes in at AOL yeah. dot com. But no, that was one of my favorite. Like the first times I came to your studio, and we were we were being Gibson geeks, and mm. you go, "Hey, man, you, you ever seen a sixty five Pelham Blue SG?" There's only like eight of them made or something, and you pull one out and go, oh, here's one. I like it so much, I bought another one. I had two of them there. Actually, I actually have three. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have a Pelham Blue, I have three, a junior, a junior Pelham two, three SGs, and two Pelham Blue Trini Lopez's. Wow. And a black Trini Lopez, which wow. is really, that was hard yeah. to find. The only uh, Rusty's the only other guy I've seen have. Got a black one? Yeah, he Peter's a got a red one. I think that's the yeah, common one. The red one, one's though. the common one. Right. Like, I sold a red one with a Bigsby to Tim Pierce, which was an awesome guitar. I mean, yeah. it's, it's one of those ones you go, ah. Yeah. But I love him, and if anyone was going to have the guitar, I'm glad he has it. So, so, John, there's a couple of questions here. I don't know if you're comfortable answering or not. This is John Shanks, by the way, S-H-A-N-K-S, for yeah, those of you that don't know. Right. JohnShanks.net, kids. <laughs> uh, one guy was asking earlier... Um, just a, a, a broad net question mm. about your songwriting. Like, what are some of the songs that we know that you've written? And there's like 500, but... Uh, I've written for uh, Stevie Nicks, Chris Isaac, Melissa Etheridge, Cheryl Crow, uh, uh, Kelly Clarkson, Michelle Branch, uh, uh, Pink, uh, 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 sh Take That, uh, it's uh, just a lot of different artists. So. Yeah, it's kind of endless, isn't it? Hopefully. Yeah. Um, bon Jovi. Bon, oh, right. Bon, bon Jovi. Jovi. Keith Her Urban. Bon Keith Jovi. Urban, right. Yeah, I've written a Lots lot. Lots of Nashville artists, too. A lot of Sarah Evans, mm -hmm. Rascal mm -hmm. Flatts. So I've written a lot of Keith Urban songs. Or, and you do a lot of like movie now. score stuff, too. I've done right? a lot of movies. Because I watch a lot of kid movies with my kids, and we always now, it's a thing, let's see if John co-wrote one of these songs, or well, wrote the song. Well, Cheryl and I wrote Real Gone mm -hmm. for Cars. Right. So, um, which, which is... Which was fun. One of, one of my favorite Cheryl songs. Nice. Yeah, that was a great... That was a great... Uh, moment because John Lasseter, who did Cars, actually edited the, s the the film to the song. Oh, really? So when you see the opening, that's a good song. Yeah, which was really <laughs> a compliment. And yeah. he was he was very kind. That you know we would go to the screenings and um, he would point out, which is very interesting. This is a little known fact that at the beginning of Cars, and you're looking at the opening there's a spot right before my harmonica solo where there's a Winnebago that turns around and goes, you know, over the, uh, uh -huh. right before the harmonica right. solo. There's a Winnebago that turns around and kind of winks at the, at the, at the, uh -huh. at the camera, so to speak. And right. that was John Lasseter's Winnebago, which is where he got the idea to do cars. Oh. He was on a family vacation. Right. And doing the Route 66. And you, just driving across country with his family, and he realized. Let me see if I that, can move this a little better. Oh, okay. No, I keep talking. Okay, I'll wait. No, 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 and no. And the no, secret okay. to life is. John? Yeah, right. <laughs> Here's how to lose weight. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Well, that way I'm not turned completely sideways when yeah. I'm talking to you. You're, that way you're in the yeah. Same. Okay, I'm just trying to. It's a better look at you, John. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure. Uh, Do you want me to go waist up or? No, no, you can go down. <laughs> yeah, go down. Anyway, so the cool thing about that moment is that he told me when he was driving cross country with his family, not working. This yeah. was after Toy Story and, yeah. all, and, and all that stuff. That he was driving. And he started to realize that cars are like people, the faces of cars, sure. and the, especially those old. That's cars, where someone yeah. that genius gets the idea for a movie like yeah. that. Yeah. So, little known fact, I don't think I've ever told that story, but he told me that story. Where, you heard it here that's first. That's a great story. We, we wore that DVD out, my kids. Oh yeah. I mean, oh yeah. We, they watched that. They'd watch it and then they put it back on. And watch we watched it, it thirty-five times yeah. at home. What's yeah. What's interesting is a lot of times 
uh, guitar players come up to me and they go, "What is that guitar? What is that sound in the opening?" Of, oh, on uh, it's a dun, real gone. Dun, 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 yeah, um, it's actually a uh, a drop six Yamaha. Really? Yeah, it's a dro- Yamaha drop six. Drop down a whole step. Yeah, it's because you're doing A. Yeah, when it's, it's really in B. Okay, I think tuned, no, because I played that song for my kids. I think it's yeah, whatever. It's tuned down. It's yeah, drop six, whatever that tuning was. Yeah. And because I had to find that, I wanted to get that lick in her key, but mm-hmm. I didn't want to capo up because it wouldn't have had the impact. Yeah, because they capo it live. Yeah, right. So all, the real way to do it is you tune down. It's the whole guitar, a whole step. Yeah, like a baritone almost. Yeah. Like and then I was actually the, I don't know how I ended up. What there. amp was it? It was a diesel. It was the clean channel on a diesel. Really? Wow, that's which, surprising. Which surprises me too. Yeah, that's not an off use channel. Two things that I don't usually yeah. ever do. You yeah. Know, that. Yamaha. Yeah, they're not known for their clean sound, but that and, record sounds great. But I want something really punchy, so I might yeah. have driven it a bit. Yeah, um, I'm really, a little distressor or something on it. Or yeah, something. maybe. I don't think there were any pedals, but anyway. Did you do that at your room in Henson? I did do that at my room in Henson. Wow. Yeah. This is great. These, this is the things people want to know. This is, you know what, John, I'll tell Let's you. Let's see, what are the, those Yamas are really cool. Yeah, and mine was, the, I have two of them. Mine was the original one, which had uh, different pickups. So this guy Pelham Blue says you worked in his studio a little bit with Miley. Oh yeah, you know who Pelham Blue is? I do. I do is, know. Is that, that the guy, guy over here on the? No, he's in, he's in Georgia somewhere. Oh, oh right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, he had a white '65 Strat with you know with a bound neck. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, baby. <laughs> Watch, he'll get real chatty now. Yeah, he's uh, on the show all the time. He's here every week. Yeah. I'm, okay, that's cool. Tried, you tried to buy his 335? That's true. He had a 335 Pelham Blue. So, but he wouldn't budge. So right. let's move on. What <laughs> so, else we got? So what other things should we know about John Shanks? You won a Grammy for Producer of the Year. Yes. In 2005. Five. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing. Congratulations. It's, uh, he did oh, five producer, records producer. that year, right? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a body of work. So they right. basically... But didn't you have a five albums out that year? There was a lot, of, yeah. So that was... You didn't sleep. And I didn't sleep. <laughs> so that, that year was... You uh, learned what high blood pressure medicine and everything no, was? No, that's what, that's what I'm going through now. <laughs> uh, that year was... Uh, it was Breakaway from Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Went number which one. Which was huge. Uh, so Pieces of Me, Ashley Simpson. Uh-huh. Uh, Breathe, Michelle Branch. Uh, Sting and Annie Lennox. We wow. did a song together. I did a song with um, uh, Cheryl. Mm-hmm. We had, uh, 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 First Cut is the Deepest. Right. Was that year. Right. And uh, there was something else. There was a song I did with Robbie Robertson yeah. for a Ron Howard movie. So what they do is they they it's see, an amalgam of all that, right? It, they see yeah. that it's you know you're working with career artists, you know established artists, and then you're you know working with younger artists, and Man. so it just. And a lot of those songs that year happened to do exceptionally well. Well, that's fantastic. I so, mean, all right. You want to talk gear? You want to talk gear? <laughs> yeah. What are you into these days? What about pickups? I heard you you had a meeting with our friend Ron Ellis recently. Yes. They're good pickups. Yeah. yeah I like those. Uh, uh, I made a pedal with Vemurum or Vemurum. Vemurum. Yeah. It's, Vemurum. Uh, it's been, yeah. It right Seminum. Yeah, I've heard that. It's um, actually real. I'm really proud of that, that pedal. There it is. Yeah. We do have it. We we'll have to turn you on to our, right our new pedals, too. Yeah, yeah. This is, you did like a. There's two of them. There you go, kids. Tone, it's very pretty. It's, Here, it, let me hold it up close so yeah, you can get a look close. at it. You better hurry because we're only making a certain amount well, of Well, here, what's the other one? There's That's the, tell, tell them the difference. This is, this is the Shanks model. Yeah, this was not. Uh, oh, okay. Are we going to have like Shanks Tower next? Yeah. So that's the four knob. Oh, yeah. See? So here's the deal. And these are dirt boxes, right? No. These dirt? are full. This is a, uh, this is like a hybrid. Mm-hmm. And this took, this three knob one actually. Because you got the Vox kind of case there. It's right? kind of like a Sol- Mark II solo sound. Okay. It's a miniature kind of solo sound homage. Mm-hmm. But this is actually one. I know you're a huge Mark II fiend, aren't you? Yes. I yeah. like, my whole thing was, I like when you roll your volume down that it really cleans up. Yeah. And I was trying to design a pedal. This took t- actually two and a half. This is no bullshit. This fucking took two and a half years to do. Really? This went through wow. seven prototypes. Yeah. 
and I kept sending it back and we kept going through this. I, I've never worked harder on, you know, I've never done anything. Are you still friends with those guys? Very much so. <laughs> they're, they're amazing, <laughs> amazing people. Well, they're really well done. It's beautiful. It's hand, the reason yeah. it's expensive is that it literally, they're made by hand and it takes mm -hmm. a long time to make them. And the, the deal is, what number is this? So this is 39. It's available here at Tom, at Tom, Tom Merchants. Merchants. But, um, you want to do a special right now on the show? <laughs> if I was, you know, in my We're house or in my rock, you could actually, I could, right? I could show you what it does. Oh, yes. Is there, is there a chair back You'll there that maybe we could bring so you could Someone sit down? Yeah, I will sign this if you buy this. Yeah, there you go. Whatever. Oh, that's a good deal. Yeah, that's a what awesome. If, what is it? Whatever that means. Well, but that, that would be one of one. That would. How that many medals have you signed? None. There you go. None. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me explain this. Explain to me. Explain. explain. The four knob. We did a video that's on their site, Vemerum. Um, here's the thing. I was. I bought a Jan Ray. I was in New York. Yeah. And they make a pedal called the Jan Ray. Mm -hmm. And I was doing Bon Jovi's record at the time. And I went into Rudy's music. Love Rudy's, my friend. Mr. Pensa. And uh, I was really impressed with that pedal because I always kind of look for certain things mm -hmm. when I try pedals. Yeah. And it's just it works for me. Right. It might not work for other And you're people. a real pedo, pedal connoisseur. You know? I mean, I've seen your rig in your studio. Like, Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely a pedal hoe. I mean, I've just... But, I mean, you're, you're astonishingly comfortable making pedals do really good things. Yes. I've seen you do it, and it's like, wow. Yes, I, mean, I can play through an amp. I can play into my JTM 45, which yeah. is what I mostly do, or right. my 50-watt Marshall, or my boxes, or yeah. Dumbles. Or, um, but I wanted a pedal that... What I loved about Fuzz Faces... And what I loved about Mark II's is, first of all, I liked the boost mm -hmm. that you get. And you, okay, we'll use Hendrix. As a, well, the as Mark II is a three transistor. You get a lot of boost out of that, yeah. It, the two had two. Some of them, the 1.5 had basically... Well, had, I'm thinking of the professional. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So this, which we ended up... We, this is really old transistors. So it's mm -hmm. new old stock transistors. And what happened was that it took a while to find the right value. So meaning that 50 was too dark and 100 was too bright. On the gain scale? Just in measuring the actual transistor, mm -hmm. the output of it. So we found that 80 was the optimum worth, you know, frequency range where that if you put it on your pedal board, and basically that it wasn't too bright and it wasn't too, um, it wasn't too dark. So for me, I had, this had to work in my rack and mm -hmm. I also had to work on a pedal board. And the key to this pedal is that you have to use it before any buffer, just like yeah. you would a fuzz Yeah, well, germanium, right. So yeah. anything germanium, like a fuzz That needs phase. to see your guitar. Right. So I basically, yeah. almost, some, most of the time, I plug into this first, and then I go into a compressor or, an, uh, you know, a Noble's ODR-1 or, yeah. uh, you know, Or a buffer, other right, just to, to run your board. Like, isn't that your board in there? That, that's one of, that that's my Pete, Pete Cornish. Pete made for you. There's yeah. a big buffer in the front to kind of drive everything or? yeah but this kind of just well you, you need, need this before all that yeah this has to go before a buffer yeah. to get the most out of this pedal right and basically what this does it's almost like a boost pedal i leave it on it's nothing it's not like rocket science but i leave it on but it basically <laughs> um it, it works really well with other pedals it, so the, the whole goal with this is uh um to me is that I used it as a boost mm -hmm. and I used it, I use it as that it had to work well with other pedals. So right. whatever pedal you use after this, right. you know, Tube Screamer, uh, the Bonamassa MXR pedal, the, uh, you know, whatever pedal you decide, this works really well. So it's and not going to, it's not going to deteriorate the performance of any No, it works in pedals. tandem. Yeah. And it gives me the headroom I'm looking for. It gives me the sparkle. So when you're playing through a Fender or you're playing through a Marshall, it really makes it voxy right. and chimey. So yeah. you get that real... That upper mid-range, lower end of the treble spectrum. Well, you get that live at Leeds thing. Yeah. You can get the edge thing. Mm -hmm. You can get a lot. It's great for country. It's yeah. great for... Uh, it's really punchy. So it's excellent for the Zeppelin thing. Yeah. And it's excellent for kind of that Englishy thing. Now, the four knob is two transistors. Mm -hmm. We just hit upon that because I was like, well, let's see if we can go gainier. More. So this is more than more fuzz face. Okay. Some guys that like that some guys really dig this and but i actually use this and then a jan ray or this wow. and a nobles or yeah. this 
And uh, man, that old Nobles pedal just kind of works that. for everything. That yeah, was it ODR one? ODR one, the old one. It's like forty bucks. Uh, yeah, or eighty bucks, eighty bucks. bucks on eBay. Yeah, but it's the original ones, not the reissues. I mean, maybe the reissues. Every guy in Nashville right. that I work with, you know, they say, "Oh, well, I use that." And well, they like else. the exotic boost, mm -hmm. the white one, right. into the Nobles, mm -hmm. and this kind of you know works as a boost. But it does this whole other thing. And then, because of the germanium, it starts to get you a little bit of that. Now, are, are these bias pots here? So you can these bias are, the No, these are, uh, yeah, bias and sparkle. So if it's, if it's too sparkly, you can back it off. Right. If it's too not enough. And the reason we did the bass knob on here is that um, if you're playing with humbuckers, sometimes you know you yeah. want to back it off. So the guys that are using this... Um, uh, Johnny from Coldplay mm -hmm. bought six of them. Yeah, yeah. Loves them. So uh, he, I gave him one, and then he came back and was like, "Can I buy five of these?" So very cool. Which to me is the Edge has one. He loves it. So to me, it's that's the highest. That's excellent. That's the highest compliment. Yeah. Well, that you've proven yourself there. So that. and then um, Keith Urban has one. Uh, uh, Peter Frampton has one. Uh, nice. There are a couple guys that we, we, we gave a couple to, and so, um, but yeah, I use it. It's not like, I mean, I was, yeah. I was playing through it this it's morning. It's not just a little business venture for it you. It has nothing to do with money. Has yeah. n Honestly, I mean, yes, it's nice that I get a little check, but it literally is a labor of love, and, and that's not why I'm here Something actually talking needed. to you. It has yeah, nothing. I know. I to me, at this time in my life, it, it has nothing to do with that. It's about having fun. And right. What I, and I always go, would I use this? And I use Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So there's the endorsement. Well, that's cool. So, yeah. Very nice. Other than that, it's... Uh, what are you working on now that you can tell us about? Uh, just finished a new Take That record, mm -hmm. which is a, a group in England. So if anyone's in England, they'll know who right. Take That is. And they're massive. Uh, so we're just finishing. I guess I'm not really supposed to talk about that. But somebody's talking about asking about Pete Cornish. You have a pretty good relationship with Pete, I don't do. you? I do. Pete Cornish. That whole board is like... Kind of custom made stuff. Yeah, Pete. Uh, I met Pete in 1994. I was with Melissa Etheridge playing guitar for her, and we opened up for Brian Adams. And mm -hmm. Brian used to have this box that he. Brian always played through a Fawn AC30, mm -hmm. like a 61. I or warmed something. up for him in Atlanta in '88, something like that. Great band. Yeah, the, it, incredible. And, Great band. Um, uh, Keith Scott. Keith Scott. Amazing. With the 50 watt Marshall and the AC30 in tandem. Yeah. Was what he was playing then. And it yeah. sounded stupid. Yeah. Well, their whole thing is that Brian plays boxes and Keith's more, and, and a high watt. Yeah. So there was a, he would play a Fawn AC30 mm -hmm. in the normal channel right. through this box, this weird magic box from Pete. Magic box, which it was the Pete Cornish treble booster. Mm hmm. Which is kind of the Brian May thing. Yeah. And, but back at the, you know, I was, oh. I know this once, then all through recording this, I said you record everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's recording. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Rom. All right. Hi, Rom. I was probably watching. Um, so he made this box, and it was this, you know, which is kind of basically got me down this path. But this was 20, you know. So treble booster, is it like a range master kind of thing? Yeah, but with full range treble booster. Yeah. Like with a little more robust, yeah. Well, the thing is, treble boosters, you know, Luke cuts all your bottom end. And uh, there used to be this guy, Tone Man. Uh -huh. Yeah, Don Butler. Don Butler. He helped me do my color boost. Right. Yeah. See, Don, I loved his. I mm -hmm. always buy his. This will just screw me now forever. Yeah. But <laughs> I always buy his, his treble boosters online because he has the full range switch in it. Right. And I really like it. And he, he used he, old stock uh, transistors in right. there. Yeah. And so, yeah. This was a pretty authentic one. But yeah, that's, what, that's what Rusty uses, too. I think he still uses Don's yeah. pedal. Right. Um, maybe he's gone to Fred's treble booster or mm -hmm. your treble booster. Or, I don't know. Well, Brian owns one. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's using it or not. But it just, you know, it just... It just you do the volume trick instead of doing the pedal dance. What it does, if you have yeah. certain pedals in tandem, you start doing this more. And when you roll back, it's ticket to ride. Exactly. Or yeah. yeah. What was here? Here's an interesting thing: was that I was in, I was in London a couple of years ago, and I was coming out of a Harrods, and here comes Jimmy Page walking past, and so yeah. uh, he and I had a conversation for about an hour and a half. Here, let's get you a little closer. We're just having a hard time getting along. Sorry. So right. yeah, we had a conversation for about an hour and a half, 
And, you know, there were definitely a few insightful things that he said to me. Yeah. Which is um, uh, that he never really turns his volume all the way up. Really? Ever. Wow. Ever. That's surprising. It's yeah. usually like, so he does that whole dance, you mm -hmm. know, and I asked him about his, uh, this is what kind of got me, I sent one of these to him, mm -hmm. is that what got me going on this is that I said, does your Mark II soul sound clean up? Mm hmm I mean, like a fuzz face. Right. So, and he said it did. So it was. So it wasn't so saturated or gainy that he couldn't get the tone. Yeah. So a lot of that punchy tone you hear from is that the, pedal. Is the, his yeah. And there's another pedal he used, but it's anyway. But the thing is, um, with his deal, he always does the volume dance. Mm -hmm. You know, the neck, the bridge, the middle, rolling the neck. Yeah. But he never really, he sets his whole thing at around seven or eight. Or, yeah. And so because if he, sense. because if he went all the way, it would kind of just well, violin-y crap out. Yeah, you know it can I mean? squash those pedals. Which yeah. is cool, like when you think of like um, good times, bad times, or some right. of that stuff, right. where it, it is kind of dimed. Yeah. But later on, here's the other thing that was I found interesting is that from Zeppelin IV on, there were KT88s and all his Marshalls. Really? Yeah. I've heard that. I've heard. I've heard some people say you use 77s. You know, this all is this, stuff, this is like this is like sitting in front of Yoda and going, yeah. Okay, was it a 12-inch speaker right. in your yeah. Supro or right. a 15? And yeah. he'd look at me and go, 12. Right. So that was kind of for me. And you got, you got, there's so much myth around him. He yeah. answered. He was very gracious and very kind, and he That's was. He, yeah, it was awesome. He was amazing. But then did he go like, "Hey, I'm trying to shop, mate." Um, no, he was actually <laughs> on his way home, so oh, okay. he was very. Well, you were going in. He was going. I out. was going out, and he was just walking down the street. <laughs> These bags are getting heavy, mate. Can, <laughs> exactly. I, can I take off? Yeah, but he was. You know, sometimes you meet, you know you meet your heroes, and it's it's, yeah. it's kind of a drag. And then, but with right. him, you know, every time I hung out with him he's just been I only met him once and it was the you know just the oh nice to meet you now piss off kind of thing but he seemed like such a gentle nice you know I saw him in 94 with Page and Plant and got to have dinner with him and hang out with him and it was me and Carmine Ross and it was you know one of those nights you never forget sure he gave, me, he gave me a pick and a set list and he, really? he, yeah he walked wow. me on stage and uh, show me everything he was using and what his rig was and his new pedal board from Cornish, so, right. which takes us back to Cornish. Yes. Um, anyway, so Brian had this box, and so finally I was asking Brian what the box was because his tone was so great through the AC30 and a 50 watt Marshall. Mm -hmm. He had a 50 watt Marshall with a blue chorus set really slow mm -hmm. and the AC30. That was Brian's tone, so right. he got that great slow chorus. Maybe and, that's what I was thinking of instead of Keith's. Well, Keith Keith is one of the most brilliant underrated guitar players I thought he was, he was in amazing. the history of rock. I sat and watched their sound check where he got to do like what he wanted to yeah. do, not just play the hit songs. No, no. And I was like, I had no idea. Yeah, how he good plays this guy John is. McLaughlin. He's yeah. he's a Jeff Beck aficionado, and he's a typical like Canadian soft spoken gentleman. Oh, you like it? That's really nice. Thank yeah, you. no, I would you know. I would literally chase him around backstage, and yeah. he'd give me guitar lessons. Tell me, all tell me, tell me. No, he's like the right way to play Scatterbrain. The yeah. right way to play certain songs. Yeah, yeah. Fucking brilliant and guitar he, player. He lives down in San Diego. Now. San Diego. Yeah, I he just came saw him. We went and saw Jeff Beck a couple he, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, he came uh, in a Jeff Beck. Well, I won't tell the story. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny story. Yeah, so, my yeah. partner. Yeah, your but, partner. But, uh, yeah, he came to Nam a couple years, and he hangs out in our booth, and he's so darn nice. Yeah, let's see what... There's other people asking questions here. That basically pedal comments. Like what? Uh, I have to put on my middle like the, uh, the guy who asked about the Shankenstein. Yeah, that's a that'd be, that's a great name. Love playing my AC30 through normal he said channel. So you're gonna make a 65 amp a Shankenstein. Oh, you know uh, that one that I made years and years ago for you, the hundred water, and I don't even know if we even got to spend much time with it. But it was when we went. I got high watt transformers and did all that stuff. Right. That was jokingly called the Shankenstein. Right. God. And and. And that was ten years ago. God, eight what, or nine years ago. And I, I, ended up, I did a. I, I was doing a clean out the. I thought that was called the. Became called the it, King Albert. It right? was the Royal Albert. Only you wanted a hundred water, but you wanted like a high watt power section and more of the Selmer Fender front end on it. Wow, how did we do? You did great. Oh, okay. It, it worked. It <laughs> sounded awesome. I saw the King's head the other day. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. My base Transformers amp. Transformers like this big. Yeah, the base amp. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we haven't caught up in a long time. But anyway, I jokingly called that amp the shake and stuff. I'm missing the tone. Ev- that went out with Susan. The missing tone EB- LBB was. Love playing What's the make and model of that pedal again? You are, it's, it's which the, one? It's the Vimrum? The Vimrum, it's the Shanks 3 knob, it's basically called. There's a Shanks 3 knob. Wow, there's so many jokes. Thanks, 3 knob. <laughs> See, it looks like that. This is the, and I've actually played This these. is the 3 knob, this is the 4 knob. And it obviously. can be yours today, signed. Oh, Jesus. John will sign it right now <laughs> with sucks. your screen name from yeah. the show, dear. <laughs> that sounds pathetic. Yeah. <clears throat> Dear, yeah, but this is, you know, there are a lot of amazing pedals. Dear so. Ustreamer696, thanks for the purchase. <laughs> so, okay, what other questions? Because I'm sure you want to get back. Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, I think just some comments. They're, everybody's listening. When the when the comments slow down, that means everybody's oh. really <clears throat> paying attention. But as far as, you know, quickly, Pete Cornish, you know, so uh, it was Brian who introduced me to Pete, and this was in 94, and I basically had to be, this is before he started making pedals. And he, yeah. And, he, and he, bas- he basically interviewed me. To see <laughs> what my style was, yeah, and, right. And he doubleized you. I said, "Well, we're, yeah." Right. And he said, "I said, well, he goes like, well, where are you playing?'" I go, "We're playing Wembley. <laughs> we're Wembley. presently at Wembley Stadium. Yeah. Is, how, does that work for you?" Little and, place, yeah. And uh, so he's modded actually since then over the years. Uh, he's modded high watts for me, where he does the Gilmore trick, mm-hmm. where he he does the thing in the back in case I want to use like an Olympic. Uh, preamp. Yeah, so I use the power section, the and then uh, he'll do the thing where he slaves the first two channels together. Uh-huh. So it's just one volume. Yeah, that controls it's all both. Banged up. Um, now, what's on this board? Because it seems like there's like ten pedals there, and it says for John Shanks on it. Yeah. Well, and he like, he would make me pedals. We, we've designed a couple of things. We made a, uh, a uh, what do we make? We made a, a, a at the end of my board a stereo splitter booster mm-hmm. so basically if i could go i could go into four combo amps wow and then just little switches so it was like a poor man's just amp switcher yeah so basically if i was going to do two tweet twins and two ac30s or whatever amps i i wanted right and you could two at a time only only two right. at a time can you can you randomly assort them yeah, so like you, I could do two twins and one AC thirty or one AC thirty. No, no, it wasn't twin. that kind of thing. It was oh. you could two at a time only. But any two, any two. Okay. So you could switch, you know, so whatever. Fender, two two boxes, two fenders, whatever one you of know. Each. Line up four yeah. different amps. Right. You can switch between those amps. Okay. And the other thing on there was uh, phase switching. Mm-hmm. So it was just a, a way to have it. So if I was recording and I flew this board, it's, that's on my kind of my main board at Henson where. I can switch between combos very yeah. quickly and check the phasing. Yeah. And because right. uh, sometimes even AC thir- AC thirties are inherently out of phase with each other. Well, there's the way the speakers are wired. There are three phases in there, and so if you've depending got, on what channel you're plugging in. Right. If you're in the normal channel. Right. That's a different thing too. Yeah. I mostly play in the Brilliant channel. Right. Which fa- has the fourth on it because it's got the top boost. Right. Right. Yeah. So, because I'm looking for that. So it's headroom. it's even, and the other ones are odd. But so. sometimes even then, you're two brilliant channels, and you gotta just make sure your speakers are in phase. Sometimes it's just a matter of the leads on the speakers exactly. are backwards, so or, that's, the, or the speaker jack, which is most of the time. Yeah. So once you do that, then you realize, oh shit, I'm out of phase, and then you just change your speaker leads, and then right. you're in business. Dave, do you want a picture of his board on the? Do you want to bring it out and show it off? Uh. Yeah, you can take a picture of it and put it on. You can post it. Okay, I'll just take a picture with my phone. When I mean, the the, I, the dream with that board is to actually send it back to Pete and have him do the kind of the Gilmore thing with it, those big donut switches. Yeah. And, well, I like whatever. it now already, just because I'm almost fifty, I can read everything. Yeah, it's big enough. And I can hit the I can hit the buttons. Correctly. But there was a couple of things that I always used to say to or ask him for, which is, uh, which I mean, I really like his boost. Uh, pedal and i really like now he's making it calls it the cornish crunch which is a really nice overdrive pedal yeah and he's making the footprint smaller which is kind of nice i've never tried any of his stuff that i felt was second rate at all oh no i mean all all of it's great whether it suits your needs or not is a different thing but the first thing he ever made for me was a it's called a soft sustain which Mm -hmm. was the gilmore pedal Mm -hmm. it was the kind of comfortably numb pedal right because i was obsessed with just a compressor it's a overdrive pedal oh okay it's amazing it's amazing so that was, I got the treble booster from the one that Brian had, 
and then he put a couple switches in it so I could do the Brian May thing. Yeah. And then he made me a uh, a soft sustain kind of like Gilmore's, like same like he was. This was this was probably in the mid '90s. He mm -hmm. did this, and then uh, <clears throat> and then he uh, then we just kind of design tried stuff over the years. And um, the last thing he's put out is, I guess, that Cornish Crunch. Oh, okay. Which is really cool. Preferably, I really love the P1 over the P2. So these are his different fuzz pedals. Yeah, right. I'm trying to remember in my head which the P1 are. is more early Ram's Head Big Moth. Okay. More than the P2. Okay. I just, for me, just, though I have, I think, the P2s on there. Yeah. And the G2s and... Uh, um, but they're, you know, they're all great. Um, yeah. So now what's the main, the main control unit that's at the front of the board? It looks like there's a buffer. There's some switching in there. That was a Wawa that actually. With an integrated Wawa, right. Integrated Wawa that he does a whole buffer system on and mm -hmm. has a boost on there. So you can get the germanium in and out without a problem. Right? Yeah. So I use, um, I haven't used this board in a while cause it's, it's a pretty big board. Yeah. So I, I've been kind of using, making smaller. <clears throat> boards um, with like H9s on them and like the wet pedal. And yeah, most of his stuff is pretty good size because he uses, for the most part, full size components in his pedals. Right. right. My fear is that, you know, the dream is to send him this that pedal board and, and have him, you know, put it in a casing like so it looks like the, the Page pedal board or the Gilmore pedal board. Yeah. You know, it's a costly endeavor, but my problem is I'm so ADD, I'm always changing pedals. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always like, uh, hey, Pete, what if I don't want to use the yeah. certain uh, configuration anymore? And so that's quite it. Because you're committing to that whatever's on that board. You're getting a lot of nice compliments here. People are enjoying the conversation. Oh, okay. so. um, uh, and people are getting censored, too. Which What does that mean? That, well, Ustream uh, takes out the generic set of cuss words. Automatically, we oh, like whatever that I'm a wanker or whatever. No, no, I think it's more like people are going fuck. You know, yeah. like, oh, oh. you know, like positive things. People, <clears throat> if you just put in shit, yeah. shit, that's amazing. It'll get. I mean, sensitive. the thing is, yeah. you know, there's a board. I really tried to do a board where it was I could really throw in my trunk, and that was really hard to do. Yeah, you need so, a big car. So basically, <laughs> so basically, that the smallest board I have, which is I'm trying to think where that is. There's a picture of that. Okay, so Miles just posted a picture of the Cornish board on okay. the fans of 65 Amps Facebook page. All right. You guys can have a look there. Did you do an interview in Vintage Guitar last month? I don't think so. Who's that? Great Somebody interview in Vintage Guitar. said he's a monster. Great interview in VG last month. You did one recently, though, didn't you? About your guitar? About Maybe. About Gibson or something? I don't know. I haven't seen that. No. Oh. So... Wow, that's cool. Anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Considering I buy that magazine, you know, you think... Yeah, right. It's like, oh. Hey, look, there I am. <laughs> there I am. Yeah. Uh, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so I tried to come up with a board. So, basically, uh, it's uh, so I, it's my pedal first. Then I'm into the MXR bass compressor, the 1176 Cock Clone. That's a good one, yeah. It's really good. That, it's that little bass compressor. I really love rocks. that. rocks, yeah. And then it, I'm into a Bob, note. Bob turned me on to that because <clears throat> I was talking to him about stuff and he just said, you have to try Bob. Bob Bradshaw. Yeah. You know, because he's, I guess, in their orbit now. You yeah. Know, they're doing some of his pedals. And oh, okay. His yeah, buffer right, exactly. and his wah and all that stuff. Yeah, so it's my pedal, then that compressor, then uh, the Nobles, then... The you know what I really love? I love the Joe Bonamassa Fet Driver. Oh really? That's, I haven't heard that. That's a, yeah. that's a awesome, awesome pedal. Wow. Cool. And uh, and Joe is obviously a yeah awesome. He's human. an okay player. Yeah. Great player. <laughs> yeah. Awesome human being. Yeah, he's, he's a, a nice guy. He's become a really good friend, and we we totally like late night gear talk. Oh really? It gets pretty sick. <laughs> 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 well, especially because he's sending me pictures from the road of like. I bought this bass in yeah, Amarillo. Or <laughs> he's sort of a collector, isn't he? He's trying to complete his brown Tolex series of like you know the one of know, every model from every year that's in one of every condition. model, blonde, brown, yeah. tweed, and the, uh, blackface. The Encyclopedia Defender. Yeah, yeah. But he, you know, I, he was like, "Who do you?" I was like, "Do it, do it." Of course, you have to do it. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> now, is this in any way, shape, or form going to take away from your kids? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's not married, doesn't have kids, and he's got oh, the money. Oh, what the hell? And yeah. he's a rock star, so good. Have fun. Yeah, enjoy, that's right. Knock yourself out. And, uh, I mean, 
I love, you know, I love the way he's, I gave him one of the pedals, he digs it, so that's cool. So someone's mentioning here, you should try our new pedal. So I just did the three germanium things, but I do them, you know, with full size, like Sozo Caps and Alan Bradley Resistance. Okay. And I, I found a I really... I tried them. Yeah, well, we're, they're in kind of prototype thing now. We're actually in production now, so... So I'll, how does this person know about this pedal now? Because I talk about them on the show. But nobody's heard this. On the show, yeah, they've heard the prototypes. Oh, yeah, and okay. I, I gotta think they the, sound. Got to be in the. I see. You got to. I uh, see. I, I thought, I'll bring a set I thought, by. I thought people like had jobs and. <laughs> they do. They're all at work, right? <laughs> are now. you guys <laughs> all at work? <laughs> while we're well, half of these guys are in Europe, so they just put their kids. Of to course. Bed. And uh, the other half are sitting on the and floor. There, and there's the laptop. <laughs> and there's there's a lot of Aussies on here that are you know like all vampires up all night. Right. Because it's that's what I it's do. it's five in the morning. So what is this? What's what is this? Is, this is your site. This is my channel on Ustream, Ustream. which is a live streaming thing. And, and how then, do we find this? Uh, there's the show's called Lunch with Dan Bull. Considering we're on it, but how do I'm we, really hurt, John? You don't know how to get. I'm here. like writing. I'm gonna. This is what my I'll life send you is. A link. Here's my life. Yeah. Get up, work out, go to the studio for 14 hours a day, and then go home. Right. That's my life. Yeah. Writing songs. Go look all at your long. kids sleeping when you get home. Go have breakfast. Don't try not to work on the weekends. Yeah. And. Uh, try to be a good you know parent right so which you are so yeah so this but this is a nice break for him this yeah. is my first day off i swear to god in months six months oh, i know every time i've talked to you you're you're absolutely you see, buried. I'm, I'm just in that room you're now. a workaholic now, are you working a lot in your home studio uh a little not not mostly at, at ensign is it just too like being so, at home, yes. too hard to focus. Because when you're at home, everyone thinks you're at home. Right. Yes. <laughs> and you got time to do a load of laundry or run to the store. And you're at home. Can you People do this? I'm like, I'm kind of writing this song. It always helps when I'm writing with someone at the house. So certain people actually like to. You can put up the do not disturb. No, no, no. Like we'll be yeah. in the living room and around acoustic guitars and a piano mm -hmm. and you know, old school, just maybe a, a beat or something. Because your home studio is just wonderful. Thank you. <coughs> Absolutely wonderful. I kind of assumed when I saw that that, oh, he's going to phase out over there at the other place. Well, it's, I, I, I always think like an out-of-work actor. Yeah. <laughs> Phone's never going to ring again. Just, you know, if the shit hits the fan, God forbid, can I still work? And yeah. could I still have a, a place to work? Right. And <clears throat> that was the idea behind kind of somewhat cloning the studio. I was going to say, it's really similar. It's similar. Yeah. It's sim it has a euphonics board in there. Yeah. Um, so it's similar, and there's Neve, Mike Prees, and there's some pretty sexy stuff in there. So oh, it's, absolutely. Um, some 47s, and there's a little drum kit in there. And it's certainly a great, great writing room. And um, Yeah. Yeah, the environment's um, very conducive and pleasant when I sat in there. Well, thank you. Talking with you, it's like, oh, man, yeah, you could get lost in this room for a while. Yeah. Week. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's cool. I mean, um, I've, I've kind of been just playing guitar and not as much the studio. I, I bought Landau's old rack about oh, really? eight months ago. Oh, nice. Well, he was selling his rack and he, he was like, Mike's got a great rack. He does have a great rack. Yeah. And also great, uh, great pedal board too. Yeah. And the effects so. are nice as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, um, so <laughs> So we're going for the jokes, easy. yeah. But then, so I said to my wife. No, but it was this the kind of to me, you know, you know, back in I've I've, I've known that guitar rack for many many years, mm -hmm. doing sessions and and so he was like, oh, I'm going to get rid of them, just kind of downsizing. Going to pedals, and, yeah. And I'm still kind of in that world where I need that ambience and the PCM 42s and mm -hmm. the Eclipse um, H3000, kind of that big U2E Coldplay yeah. stuff. Right. For a lot of that kind of is Coldplay working over in your building now? They, they were, yeah. I was there a couple of weeks ago, and I had my old man glasses on doing something. I was I was picking up something from another guy there, mm. and and this guy's walking down the hallway, and it looked like Chris Martin. Tom Shirovsky in in the silhouette from the distance with my re similar size with my with my readers on. You know, I'm sitting there like this, and he's friendly guy, very, and and. I was like, oh, hey, man, how you doing? And, he's, and, I, and I hear this English accent. Oh, do you know the password for the Wi-Fi here? And I looked up and I went, oh, no, yeah. And I told him what the password was. And, and I realized, oh, it's Chris. You know, like, yeah. like, and he was so friendly and didn't know me from Adam. And he just, hey, they're, how you doing, mate? Yeah, they're and amazing. Like, they're just amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah, I was disappointed it wasn't Tom. <laughs> yeah. You're not Tom. Where's the beard, dude? Like, yeah. you got rid of that? And yeah, Tom looks good. 
actually it's a long gray beard now. Anyway. Yeah, they just did with the Blackberry Smoke record over there, and he said he actually had beard cred with the Blackberry Smoke guys. Exactly. Like they were like, oh dude, that's a beard. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. gonna be a cool record. Not it's like our beard. LA shave things that we have. But those guys are amazing because they're all considering the, the how big that band is. They're yeah. uh, just the nicest guys, and uh, yeah, really I know a couple of those guys from Atlanta back when I used to play in Atlanta. I'm talking Coldplay. Oh, Coldplay. Coldplay. I'm sorry. Coldplay. Biggest Berry band Smoke. in the world. Basically. Never heard of them. What's it about? <laughs> no, there. I've, I've, I've heard Coldplay. nothing but positive things. About you were, those you were guys. talking about Chris Martin. For initially, I was. You're correct. Thank you. So I was. Yeah. So they're amazing guys, uh, and uh, become kind of friendly. And I, I, I just lent Johnny like ten amps. Yeah. So they were just recording and. He was playing through a 65 AC30 and a Blackface Fender Pro. That nice. was kind of his main thing, and a pedal board of mine. Yeah. <laughs> and For the record? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, he, there was one, this one pedal board of mine, the one I throw in my car, he actually loves. The one that does fit in the trunk. Yeah, and it's got a Maleco analog delay, a wet r- reverb pedal, and then it splits into an H9 at the end. Yeah. Versus a 2H9. Yeah, an H9 at the end. So it's basically my pedal, the compressor, the Nobles, uh, the Bonamassa pedal, uh, some kind of fuzz um, pedal, then the, then the uh, Maleco analog, the reverb, and then the H9. Oh, okay. That's, to me, the ultimate small pedal board. Yeah, I was going to so, say there's no way you can play in stereo. You can get, you get the mono analog delay up the front, and then right. you get the ping pong with the mm-hmm. H9, and then you get the reverb. Uh, yeah, though I, I'm a fan of... Um, the Strymon Reaver pedal. Not the Big Sky, the other one. With the, the tremolo. Oh, the, um, yeah, the brown one. one. Yeah, the brown one. Sorry, I've been up for like two days. My daughter broke her leg Monday yeah. night, so, I've, my, so my normally low IQ is much lower now. Yeah, and you're also at a certain age where you have those senior moments where you just can't. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. <laughs> okay, any more questions? So Keith there? Scott was in the vintage guitar. That's what he's talking oh, about. Oh, gee, yeah. Well, yeah, you guys have any questions for John? Because I'm sure you got to run, and we actually got to wrap it up. You've 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 done the whole thing. So listen, we're gonna like deck this all out and make it look nicer. I'm gonna bring more of my Fresnel lights, and we're gonna mount them properly and make it look nice. Would you like to come back, and we'll be sitting sure. on the sofa and have a where well, you don't have to stand behind the counter in an awkward position. We've got some stools. Yeah. So you're going to do this every week from here? Well, what I'm going to do this When 60, is the show, every week? Wednesdays, I'm doing the 65 show. Okay. And then Rob and I are talking about just doing like a gear show. Um, oh, wow. And, you know, I'll shave and clean up and look not like this. And um, and then, you know, try to make it something that's marketable, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically just gear nerd stuff. You know, exactly what we're doing now, only maybe just a little more formalized and and then see if some folks want to, you know, contribute gear or participate in different ways. Yeah, you know, it could be cool. Is that you know you kind of just quickly like come by, you you do the almost like uh, actors workshop right. thing, yeah. where even if you go film a clip somewhere, like you right. came to my studio and you'd be like, oh, this is what I'm using and this is how I get that sound. And, yeah. Or whoever, you know. Well, or you could do it here, but you could certainly, the easier way is you just do a little snippet. Well, if you don't have us, we'll come by. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're my friend, so like I'm going to, I throw soft questions at you because I don't want to embarrass my friends. But normally when I talk to people on the show, it's kind of rude. Oh, and you're uh, sarcastic with people. Well, I just I'm normal Dan, but you know, um, <laughs> which normal Dan? Uh, the, the, I've known many Dan. The, the new normal Dan. Oh, that Dan. Yeah, the new normal Dan. Not the old Dan. Not the old Dan. The old 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 Dan or the old no, Dan? not the '80s Dan. Okay, who was on the ski team, but okay. um, and not 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 the crazy overworked Dan that you knew ten years ago. The, right. The, the the more normalized Dan. Okay. But my sense of humor is a little bit. Uh, Okay, anyway. Can I borrow your rig too, John? No. Um, Can I borrow your rig too? For a fee. Yeah. Yeah. But that was um, a pedal board, it wasn't a uh, So we're rig. gonna we're gonna try to formalize this and, and turn it into something. Anyway, the point I'm getting at is that, you know, usually I'm a little bit rude and funny with people and they seem to think it's marketable. Well, that's why I have Fran, because if you got really rude we'd have to take you out. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. That's part of the reason I'm keeping it soft pedal here. Oh. Soft, but really a little soft. Sting. See what I did there. All right, the but um, with, um, man, it's a pleasure to see you. Not a surprise. And so, um, tell everybody at home hello. I will, so I can go go back to. You can go back to Dave now. When you when you. But thanks. Fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> fuck off, mate. 
But uh, what were you saying, Francis? I'm when you formalize the Cheers show, will you end it with anything cool? Like give a sign on the Man Show when they used to have the girls on trampolines? Or no, probably not that. Cool. But we are going to do like a theme song and credits. So if you want to help with the theme song, John. Okay. I know. It has to be something bonehead. It can't be like you know something too. Wait, well, obviously we can't. Uh, it can't it's, you know, it's got to be something like you know, dumb. Right. In a good way. No, but fun. Good job. But, you know, youthful fun, all that kind of stuff. Well, and hello. hello, John. <laughs> hello, mate. Hello. Um, and that's just good as a wink to a blind bat, eh? But, yeah, obviously we What's can't do... for lunch? These are, come on, ask some fucking real questions, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> Jesus. It's like the, um, the restaurant. Obviously we can't do copyright infringement stuff, so, you know, just something with a cool hook. It doesn't even have to be vocals. All right. You know, well, dream on, dream on. So, you can't do that one either. Well, I can't do that. Yeah, well, you Stay could, gold. but you have to. What's that? Stay gold. Stay gold. Does that work? I think if you say stay gold pony boy, and then it's all over. Oh, that's right. Stay gold stay, pony stay boy. Gold. Yeah, okay. Well, it's almost 1 30, so we've kind of uh, John eat, ate up your whole show. I, it's it's fine. John <laughs> can eat up the show any, yeah, so. anytime he wants. John's a usurious bastard who used my whole show. There was really no second agenda. That's right. We did not have an agenda, and uh, John just shows up. So that was pretty fun, I think. Thanks, John. I showed up Thanks, too. Francis. Francis showed up, <laughs> and he told kiss stories, which are amazingly fun. Um, have you ever considered starting a duo with someone with the surname Arnitage? Amitage? I'm not sure what that I means. I don't know what that means either. What's yeah. what's same New York crap? Same New York cap. Oh, cap. Oh, yeah. John. John's cap. Yeah. He loves that hat. He's got several of them, I, I think. I think so. Yeah. Either that, that or... would start to smell. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it would have rotted smell. through by now. <laughs> but, yeah, he's a New York guy. Originally. How do you write a hit song? That's a, well, that's a whole other show, right? Well, see, that's the kind of question I'd ask if we were actually interviewing. Let's just get down to brass. Yeah. How do you write a hit song? How do you make song? a lot of money writing hit songs? That's what we all want to know. Yeah. How do you hit it 300 yards out of a sand trap? <laughs> I can tell us. I can tell us about Paul's what? What is this? Ray Prince tell about Paul's gear and rig. He's playing Wizards, isn't he? No, he plays. Uh, we did try those for a minute, but he's playing uh, Angle. Oh, Angle! Right. Angle. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We can talk about that on another Here, show. Let me. Uh, we'll get you, real, real mic. Like, talk into that. Cause I think I got it really hot. Uh, how's that working? Yeah, there yeah. I had it super hot because no matter how close I moved it to John, he would move back. Right. He's afraid of the microphone. John's very shy. <laughs> arm, arm tie. Arm Armitage. Tie. Think about toilet humor. I'm sorry, Hoss. I'm, it's going over my head. Oh, is that you, 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 must, you must explain yeah, he's us. In, he's, he's British. You must explain us. Armitage. 14 hour days in the studio. That's how you do it. That's, right. Yeah, uh, you know, John does have one of the most amazing work ethics I've ever seen. He is there a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think he qualifies as a workaholic. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. I think most of us do. And, like, they, like the, you know, I think it's true, right? Where people say, if you do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. That's right. So we all kind of get caught up in, because we like what we do, we'll stay there right. later right. than we should. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, he's just been that way ever since I met him. Um, ever since I met him, you know, 12 years ago, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. Probably about, that's, I think that's about when I met him. Cause when actually, he was doing the Soak Up the Sun record. Yeah. With Cheryl. I, I met John. I was, I was uh, Melissa's guitar tech. Mm -hmm. But I was Melissa's guitar tech during the period that John was leaving the band right. to, per, to pursue producing. Like yeah. on his own, right? So I met him briefly, like through Melissa, because mm -hmm. he we were doing some. She was doing those shows live and alone, you know, when she was just solo yeah. acoustic, and he came to some of the gigs. So I met him briefly there. Yeah. And then I got reconnected with him just doing some uh, stuff over at Henson. Yeah. Like I, I did a few sessions with him, mm -hmm. and then um, I was touring at the time. And this is a long story, but my second son was sick when he was born, and I wanted to downsize. Touring, I didn't sure. want to tour as much because I was be going home, from yeah. I was going from one tour to another. And I was out with the Offspring, and I went out with R.S.B. Wag, and I went out with Kiss, you know. Mm -hmm. And when my second son was born and he was sick, I wanted to stay home, and I called John and I said, "Hey, if I'm trying to stay home, if you got sure. anything for me to do, I'd love to come down and do right. some studio work." 
And he literally said, I can use you as much as you can come down here. Wow. So that was eight years ago when my second son was born. And I've, and so since then... That's when I met you. I think you just started. Yeah. When he still had the the old um, the office there at Henson. Yes. Catacorner from yep. the studio. So... It was George Harrison's old office, yep, right? That's correct. Dark Horse Records. Correct. And um, so since that time, so my second son was born. It's eight and a half years ago now. Um, Kiss has been the only band that I've toured with mm-hmm. in, the, in that time frame. And when I'm not touring with them, I'm working with John. Right. And Kiss's touring schedule is not brutal, is no, it? No, no. But we we mostly do the summers. Yeah. And then we, we do, you know, short runs, you know, in Europe or Canada or yeah. one-offs. They do a lot of TV shows. They yeah. do a lot of performances and stuff like Many that. Many tours so. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not it's not brutal. So it's good. It's almost kind of like a little vacation for me. I get yeah. to go away on tour yeah. and do a little travel, and then I come home and I go in the studio with John. So yeah, that's very I've been cool. very fortunate that I've had, you know, both both opportunities at the that, that kind of feed off of one another. Right. Pelham Blue uh, asked, did Jeff leave as his engineer? I know Jeff went back to school, right? Didn't he go to get his master's degree in physical physiology, S- physical therapy, some, something like something that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know. But he still pops in. And I actually, he, I think he still he, does some work for John. Like I think he does one-off one work for him. He'll come in and do some engineering and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, but he's not working there full-time. No. Yeah. No, Paul, Paul, um, why am I drawing a blank on his name? He's going to be so mad at me. The new guy? That's all I know is Paul. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. That's all I guy. know. The new guy who's been there for six years yeah. or something. How does Ace what? How does Ace get that tone, amps wise? I think it was just a Norland Les Paul through a Marshall, wasn't it? That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. He was buying off the shelf Les Pauls and Jeff the engineer. I think he was one of the first endorsees for um, Stuck in Vegas. Demarzio Super Distortions. Yeah, the I remember Paul telling me ceramic a funny magnet. Pickups. I remember Paul. Tell me a funny story about that. They 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 met Larry DiMarzio in the early days of Kiss, mm-hmm. and he he came to them because he started making right. pickups. And he came to them and was like, "Hey, I got these pickups. I want you to put them in your guitars." And Paul was like, "Why would anybody take a perfectly good pickup out of a guitar and put one of your pickups in?" He right. goes, "This is never. This guy's never gonna. <laughs> yeah, never gonna. What a make, stupid idea. Yeah, what yeah. A stupid idea. Yeah. This guy's never gonna make any money. That's hilarious. And uh, there you go." So that's very funny. It is amazing how many pickups, you know, like I was just telling you a story the other day about oh, yeah. changing uh, three pickups, three, three sets of pickups. There's in my last 50 fall. pickup makers. Now. And I was just yeah. like, and they all make, and then I, I, at some point I just went, this is how many do I have to try? I mean, mm-hmm. they all sound good, but you're kind of, I guess you're looking for the one, right? You're looking for the. I think you just find one that looks good on you. You know, yeah. like you go into a store and you try on shirts. It looks great on the mannequin, but doesn't look good on <laughs> just you. Doesn't look good. Sometimes it's the exact opposite. You put it on and go, yeah, this makes me look good. Yeah. And I think that's all it is. Because, yeah, there's 50 guys making pickups now, and they all make PAFs. That's right, DiMarzio. Super Distortion. Super Distortion, yeah. Yeah. Great pickup. And I think his Marshalls were just. Mark II's James off the shelves JMP. Yeah, they just had whatever back then. I whatever was, was just... new and current, you know. Because yeah. I mean, Kiss, they have a great sound, but it wasn't about the sound with those guys. It was, it was the whole no, but they're, they're it was early... the whole theater of the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that, you know? that that's true. But the, their their early tones are are very obviously reminiscent mm. of that era. I mean, it, that was the sound. New you know? York street rock and roll. Yeah, and yeah. like just just just. Pegged Marshalls with no master volume, so mm-hmm. they were just so that's why they needed those super distortions because they had no yeah. distortion. Well, that's why know? they needed the platform shoes so they could get up above. <laughs> then never mind. So it wouldn't feed back because it would right. be hitting right into the speaker. Well, yeah, because they because they're not you know anyway. Um, I think we've taken this as far as we can, Dan. Is it's this horse dead? Are we beating it? Yes. I think Ace used some small tweeds in the studio. Oh gosh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm sure they've, they've yeah. everybody uses. You'd be amazed what people use in the studio. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's it runs the gamut. That's right. You know? Are you guys going to be early to Vegas? I'll be there till the fourth. Is that you? Are you going to Vegas? Yeah, we're Kiss is doing a residency in Vegas. You should come out. I'd love to. We where is the uh, residency? It's the Hard Rock. Um, Hell yes! I'm gonna see if I can if I can get some. Uh, we'll just drive over uh, one. We'll see if I can get some money for promoting this for them. Yeah, um, Gene, are you listening? November, <laughs> Gene, I'm gonna need a. Oh look, money. it's yeah. Gene Simmons. Here he is. Uh, yeah. Um, November fifth is the first date, and November twenty third or fourth is the last date. Three weeks. Oh wow, that's good. So long we're basically line. doing we're basically doing Wednesday night, 
off Thursday, uh, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday. Okay. So Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Well, I can drive over for a Saturday show. Yeah, come Just on down. Just spend the night and go back Sunday morning. Come on down. Come on down with Dan and meet Dan in person. At, uh, we, could, we could broadcast from there. That'd be cool. Can we do that? Yeah, absolutely. All I need is uh, I'll bring a laptop with a camera. Oh, yeah. You can do it on an iPhone? I can do it on an iPhone. Uh, the battery will run down. But uh, either that or we can just record something and then push it later. I'm out of the camera. Oh, yeah, let's get you in the shot. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's Francis. Look Dang. at those guns, baby. Come on, dude. What have you been doing? I L work out with me and Zach Wild work out a lot. Really? Yeah. You lift him and then he lifts <laughs> <laughs> That's That uh, was too easy. I love that, too. <laughs> were, you at, were you at the amp show when uh, Zach Wild was taken out by Tommy Smothers? What, from the Smothers Brothers? Yeah. Who's 70 some odd years well, old? Taken out? What do you mean? They had an arm wrestling. Oh, really? yeah. I, I, right. I heard about that. I wasn't there. Tommy Smothers, who's in amazing shape. Wow. Also, one of the most insane people you ever meet in your life. Really? Yeah. Uh, brilliant guy. Like, too smart for his own good. Some kind of politics. And then Tommy said something to Zach, and they got into an arm wrestling contest. Tommy's like but you gotta size. admit though, when a seventy-year-old dude challenges you to arm wrestle, you might let him win. Yeah, you know, yeah, like it's Tommy yeah. Smothers. All right, you got me. You know. But what? If, what if you don't? What if he just <laughs> yeah, you break his arm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. Oh, sorry. That's what I mean. Like he you can, just kicks your ass. You can, and you, you're, you can you're split him like him a be like just, a wishbone, just crack. You know. He's also a gymnast. He's, yeah, he's yeah. a big yoga guy. He's a big workout guy. Uh, he's got to weigh what 130. Yeah, he's in astonishing shape. But yeah, he's always there. And the first time he came to the amp show, he was wearing like his Vishnu garb. His, uh, I mean, Krishna garb. Really? Yeah, he had his Hare Krishna robe on. Is that what he does? Is that I don't know. I, I just I just thought you're the guy's nuts. Are they yeah. both still alive? The Smothers I don't brothers? know. Dick? Tommy, Is Dick, know. Dick alive? We'll have to look it up. Well, yeah, we should probably head out. It's 1.30. Francis, what a nice surprise. Oh, yeah, yeah. thank you. It's always a pleasure I'm, to see you. You know, I, you, you had invited me to come down to the show when you were doing it over at Bob's yeah. studio. You said you should come down sometime. Well, and then actually one time I was talking to Bob, and he was telling me, he's like, you got to come down, because I dropped off some Wizard Yeah, Bob was him. hilarious on the show. Yeah. He, man, he loved it. He was just, bah, 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 bah. he would just get all worked up. It yeah. was really funny. Telling all these hilarious stories. Um yeah. But so we're going to set it up, and it's going to look formal. This looks really slapdash and poopy right now. It's my for, you have kids, you know what poopy is. I know exactly what it is. But um, we're going to set up, and so please feel most welcome to drop by. I would love anytime to. on and it's Wednesday. It's convenient too because we're right across the street. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, John Slocker's here. Yeah, right? so. this is a good setup though. You got to get this is a good. It's a cool yeah. shot. See, I'm doing it in standard definition now. When I do it in high def, the shot looks amazing. It looks really good. Uh, uh, but I have a software where would issue. You, would you still shoot it from that angle? I think what we're going to do is the hook the cameras over here. Um, so one will be kind of where those guitars are, and one's going to be where that screen is. Mm -hmm. We're going to plug the computer into that big screen, and then we're going to tilt these sofas at a V looking right into this Good. area. So we can have a little more normal conversation where you're comfortable and have a microphone. It's really. like, it'd be like the view. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Yeah, well, and we're trying to think of names like that. I was thinking calling it the Tainer Hole, um, just because. Not to steal, not to steal from that metal show, but we'll steal from that metal show, and you should have a guy in the corner just just playing. shredding <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> we'll be like, you got to yell over the dude. He's just there wanking in the background. No, but it'd be like the you know like oh, yeah. somebody's someone that goes, you dogs, know, like on go, on. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, right. oh yeah, we yeah, they, they do rim shots. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. Take a break, but like don't go to anything. Like don't yeah. do anything. Just say right. we're going to take a break now. And now a word from him. <laughs> you just come back. Well, I was thinking, you know, like on Top Gear, how they have the Stig. Yeah. You know, it's like some Formula One driver that they he drives all their cars around the yeah. track. We'll have some dude like that here's great because they all live right here. And we'll just cover up his face. Yeah. And he can sit there and you can guess who it is. Yeah. yeah, like George Lynch somebody, or somebody, Phil X and, or somebody to sit here and just... And like when some random customer... But I'll, I'll, I'll put like, the camera... Like, hey, I'll put down. Like you're him, I'll put the camera like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. <laughs> and guess who it is. <laughs> That'd be yeah. fun. Yeah, that's it. Fun stuff. Good Tommy show, and Dick man. both still alive. All right. Yeah. Maybe we can get them in here. Man, I'd love it. Yeah. How funny would just, that be? Just to have him go, Mom always liked you best. Yeah. I would pee on well, myself. If they're at the AMP show this Sunday, maybe you can yeah. corner them. Yeah. We're not doing it this year, but I'm going to go there and visit. Yeah. We kind of skip every third or fourth year, but uh, I'm going to go there and hang out. You're going to be conspicuously absent. 
Really? I don't think so. No, I, think, I don't think you have ever skipped it. I have once. What, once out of two years. Yeah. Hear, hear these guys play I, guitar I, sometimes. I've had yeah. people ask me, you know, so what's Dan bringing to the show? Well, there's going to be a whiskey in the Wampler room. Brian Wampler is going to have that whiskey in this cabinet that's right here. They they like us in low def. It says the guy says you're fine in low def. Oh no, it just looks a lot better in high def, and the sound is better because we're going to set up like you know real mics and we're going to wire up the loud room in there. Oh yeah. So we can have heads out here but play in there. Oh that's cool. And it comes, that's what I used to do on my old show. Oh that's a great idea. And it worked really well. We're just ha we're just uh, uncomfortably slow. Um, getting it set up because we're all so busy and the amp show is going on and you know all this stuff. Who's Pretty Miles in charge of the rim shots? Miles, Miles okay. Rose. You'll be in charge of the rim shots. Yeah, you can just sit back and. I can't do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> with the pit, with the bucket, and the whole or thing. Or Vernon Reed. <laughs> Same thing. Doing this. Are those real licks? I'm not sure. <laughs> like, it's so crazy. Or yeah, Tommy Smothers. That would be good. You need a hot female co-host. See, that's what I said. Really, you think we have to go TNA on the show to make it work? No. No. I'm, I'm she should be conservatively dressed, like a nun, but really pretty. A really hot so nun. From his wife oh yeah, I John Five. To the show. John Five would be fun to have on the John show. John Five, Steve Jordan doing the rim shots. Yeah, they'd swing, wouldn't they? <laughs> Steve Jordan. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, half these guys are rehearsing right across the street I was at say, Mates we all the time. We could turn this into a real guitar show. We should just put a sign players. up at Mates if you're here on Wednesday. <laughs> if you're here on Wednesday we, feel free on. to come across the street and crash Dan's show. I mean, show. Steve Stevens, right? He's always here. Yeah, and George is here all the time. George is here. I mean, we could have some great, uh, a hot female guitar player. Now, yeah. would that be, well, would I know, that, would I know, that include uh, the girl? pretty well. Who? Ori, Orianti. Yeah. She's really he, they nice. They said a hot female guitar player. Oh, no, she's yeah, pretty. Yeah. Ah, but it's, no, but the girl. Where's who, the rim shot? The girl who, um, the girl who's now playing with Alice Cooper. She's pretty. She's pretty. Yeah, cute. right. There's a bunch. Or with drunk Keith. Either that, or maybe like just like a jazz double bass player. Totally inappropriate. Doesn't fit into anything we're yeah, talking about. Exactly. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And a harmonica play. Yeah. Like, yeah. Him or the guy. <laughs> or a xylophone. <laughs> ding, 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 a little Lionel hand. I've been going to, I, I, I stop at um, Joe's Bar and Grill, right, yeah. on Magnolia. Yeah, yeah. And they always have, like, these rockabilly bands in there. And I was in there oh, like, yeah. last week, and there was, a, I, I just, I guess kept watching them, you know, the, the upright bass player dude. And I was like, is it the guy? I gotta get one of those. There's a He's duo. Kinda that, got like a mohawk. Yeah, thing. yeah. There's a there's a duo that plays there, and they play like over at Viva Cantina a lot. And it's a dude with a mohawk, and a guitar player is a Japanese dude playing a Gretsch, and he's got like two tape echoes. No, they're insane. That they're wasn't, so that good. Wasn't, it might, I mean, it might have been the bass player guy. Maybe, the, yeah, it might be the same bass player who sings kind of rough and gravelly. A smoking monkey. A smoke Sorry. jazz flute. Yeah, that would be jazz good. Flute. Yeah, that'd be perfect. A triangle and an accordion. Yeah. Four six-year-olds with kazoos. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny, too. Yeah, yeah we'll figure it out. But anyway, the ideas just keep rolling in. We're creative people. Yeah. I'm so tired, i got to stop. Yeah, okay, that's it. I literally have been up since Sunday night. It's over now. Well, Late fellas, uh, what a nice surprise. John Shanks and... Francis, why why can't I not remember your last name? You don't have to. Okay, it's just Francis. It's, just Francis. it's like Cher. Yeah, that's right. There's no, it's like Prince. No last name it's like Prince. Name. Maybe that's it. You've never told me your last name. That's it. Because he's in the he's in the witness protection program. Fantastic. So. Fantastic. And you have three Facebook pages, right? No. There's Fantastic, Fantastic Two, and Fantastic Three on Facebook. And, uh, I'm the third. My dad was junior and I was the third. Oh, you're a third. Oh, it's literally your name yeah. is Francis something the third. Yeah. No, yeah. oh, I'm Harry D. Bull the second. Oh. D is for Daniel, of course. So I get it. The Esquire. Esquire, yeah. I got that I got that name from this guy years ago when we were on tour and you know, when you're on tour there's somebody has to be in charge of stocking the bus, make sure you have milk and bread and Yeah. And, and they used to call it the bus mom. Yeah. Who wants to be the bus mom? Right. Who wants to be the bus mom, you know? 
So one year we were on tour, and I said, well, I'll do it. I said, and they were like, okay, you can be the bus mom. I said, no, 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 I want to be the bus captain. But, that's right. So the bus captain, so, so some of Jim Service, who's Joe Perry's guitar tech for 20 years, nicknamed me Captain Frantastic. So Frant- I thought it was going to be like one of the wardrobe guys. Fantastic. <laughs> we don't have wardrobe guys. Oh, you're, you're throwing a shadow on me, buddy. Oh, am I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for the nice comments. Uh, I'll have this posted uh, up shortly. (laughs) All right. Take care, fellas. And thank you to John Shanks and to Francis for dropping by. Frank Falbo and Miles Rose. Frank, I'm sorry we didn't get to throw up your guitar here really quick. You want to see the Falbo 612 string? Yeah. Yeah, let's look at that really quick. Hook it up. Hook it up. Hook it up. Look at this. Now that is a machine. Right there. And it sounds amazing. Can you play can sale? you play the Bon Jovi song on it? Every rose has its thorn. What's the opening lick to what what is it? Wanted dead or alive? I can't play that. Yeah. Did you realize the future world on top of that guitar costs more than my car? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's definitely so bad. Is that what you learned when you took guitar lessons? Every, every kid I know that takes lessons, like, they know that. Da, 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 can I see it? Hello. Let's do it. I gotta go. Oh, is that your boss? My boss is me. See you later, John. Clock in, buddy. Oh, that's it's all the same. Only the names have changed. I can't sing that high. Really? bad huh really bad camera angle though what is that lick it's really it's weird, weird. Yeah, this doesn't follow any kind of... yeah it's not like a normal yeah it's like the intro to uh... yeah. sing it prank It's the fun of being able to make fun of yourself is what's enjoyable. Yeah. On a dark desert highway. See, doing plenty of material. Cool wind in my hair. No one's going to buy this guitar now, are they? Yeah. I forgot the words, but no one really cares. What is the uh, Jack knows? Yeah. It's a great guitar, man. Don't scratch it. Yeah. yeah. What is that first note? No, it's none of those things. There it is, because it's like a minor. It's a minor? Yeah. Something. Yeah. Not F minor. Right. That's like on uh, Conan O'Brien, they do things where it's not the song. It's right. name that tune, but they play not that song, so they don't have to pay copyright. Right. Yeah. They mess <laughs> yeah. it up. Right. Right. <laughs>
I used to play in a band where we'd turn every song we knew just into minor keys, and it, yeah. would, it would sound much better. Or play it major if it was minor. Yeah. Just to see if you could figure it out where it was, you know. Yeah. Hey, mom, what's in the way? It's a country version. Wow, this is great, man. It plays just effortlessly. 12, 13. Oh, you guys are telling me how to do this now? Oh, my gosh. Lacewood, if someone's asking? Yes, it is. Yes, Lacewood, top it back. Because we can. It's like, oh, my. Hey, look, I'm on camera. Second chord in Hotel California? Yes. F sharp seven? Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right, That's absolutely. Cool, man. And what does this go for? Uh, d d I don't know. <laughs> God, it smells great. It smells like a cigar box. Yeah. And yeah. I mean that in the nice way, like, ooh. Yeah. No, that's a, Is that the lace wood? That's that a call it? for price. It's a call for price. Yeah. <laughs> so that means it's more than 800 bucks. Yeah. Right. Stairway. I can do the country version. There's a little filly, who knows? Anyway. <laughs> that's fantastic, man. Thanks, buddy. Beautiful. And on the back it has racing stripes. Yes. Racing stripes. Yeah. There you go. You can see the computer reflection in there. The finish is so good. Yeah. It's like a mirror. Look at that. <laughs> now it's an Escher drawing. And it's got cool controls. Yeah. It's all the cool controls. It has lots of cool controls. Yeah, it's a little Fishman preamp for each neck. They each have a tuner on them. And it's their little, it's their little uke preamp, but voiced for the guitar. So it's the right. size and format of the uke one, but the guitar EQ. So. All right, it's 10 to 2. We got to go. Yeah, goodbye. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will uh, see you next week. There'll be more lights. It's going to look better. Hopefully, we'll be in HD and hopefully some sound. So, anyway, thanks again to John Shanks and Fantastic Three, Frank Falbo and Miles Rose. And we'll see you next week. Bye.